Okay then, what we're going to look at next is in our instruction book, or rather in our sewing machine manual, we're going to look at creating what they have to say about creating original AccuFill designs. So again, what I want to just mention to you is that um, <clears throat> remembering what each component of this program is going to do, they all can be interrelated, but they are yet distinct from one another in some ways. So what the original AccuFill design is, is that we're going to have uh, some ability here to create our own quilt blocks. Now, when we actually work on a quilt, let's say, for example, that we're going to make a quilt and we are going to have, I'm just supposing some things here, maybe nine different blocks, but we want each block to be different. One of the things that we can do here is we can um, design all of those blocks in this section of the program so that they all have the same dimension to them. And then those blocks fit within a designated size of a project. So let me explain what the book is saying about that. Um, we are going to be creating original AccuFill designs in this second section of our program. And to do this, we can work from it in one of two different ways. I think we already talked, first of all, about the fact that we are limited by the size of the hoop. And so one of the things that we could do is we could just enter the overall size of the hoop or of the design that we want to make. And we could work it from small, that small section, uh, thinking about a larger section. Or, as the uh, manual is telling us, we can enter the overall size of the quilt that we're working with. And then we can, um, the, the program itself will limit the size of the square or of the design based on those larger dimensions. I hope that this is making sense. Let me say that again. We can enter the overall size of the quilt. Let's say, for example, our quilt is 50 inches square. And then we can click OK on here. And the program is going to calculate the optimum size of the AccuFill design and the pattern of that design and how many num pieces or number of patterns will fill up the quilt. So remember, this part here is talking about the fact that we are limited to the size of the hoop. So we can enter an overall size of the quilt. The program is going to divide that dimension by the size of our hoop to give us the number of patterns that we're going to need to fill up that hoop, that quilt, All right? And once we get into the layout tab and we start importing designs that we're going to be using, depending on how we fill up the hoop with those designs, again, the program will um, allow us to adjust the size of each one of those hoopings. All right, so let's see if we can make this make some sense to us. The design that we're going to be working with in this section is uh, some designs that come out of the stippling parts or quilting design somewhere in the program anyway. And we're going to be importing them into the size of the hoop and we're going to create a layout. So what we're going to do next is um, take a look at this. It's probably not real clear to you because I would have to zoom in on it a lot here in my program. But when I zoomed in here, I could see that we were working with a 500 millimeter size of a design. So what I've got going on now is I'm going to open my program, come to the Create Original AccuFill Designs. This dimension right here is 500 millimeters. I just went ahead and I um, converted back into inches. This is what it looks like. 500 millimeters is going to be divided up into nine hoopings, three by three. And the size of the square that we are ultimately going to be designing for is a six and a half inch square. So let's go to our home tab. Actually, let's go next, and this is what it looks like. The entire gray area is the size of the hoop. This is our six and a half inch square that fits within our, our ASQ22 hoop. So let's go pick out some designs. Um, one of the designs that was pictured in the program actually came from, I think it's in the quilting design section. Yes, it is. Okay, so we are using this corner motif. And then we have a choice of either three links, two links, or one link. 
of this cable design. And I have experimented with this a little bit already. And actually, I think um, they stitch out much the same. But I think we'll go ahead and we'll go with the two links. Okay, so let's go with this corner. Let's drag it up into the corner of our hoop. Let's go and get our two links. And let's drag that one up to the top of the hoop. And let's just try to center it here on this vertical line, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and use this. And let's use our corner tool so that we've got it in our four corners. This one here, um, I think we'll just use the copy paste button. We'll copy and paste it again. And we'll rotate this one 90 degrees so that we can have it in the on the side of our block. All right, almost to 90. And I'm just going to kind of center it here on the horizontal line this time. This one here, let's rotate it 90 degrees. Actually, I could have copied and pasted that one that I had rotated. That would have been a little faster, wouldn't it? Drag it on over. And last of all, let's copy and paste this one. And just drag it on down. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to play with positioning these as they need to be. So what we want to look at when we do this is we're going to go ahead and zoom in on our hoop. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to match up, you know, all of those connecting points on our block. So I'm just going to say, you know, I can see already that my block is a little bit smaller than this dimension because this is the size of these predetermined um, size of these each one of these little motifs. So what I'm looking for now is I'm just going to match everything up as best I can right there where all of these intersections are at. All right, so let's work on that for a little bit. As we work on our layout, one of the things I want to draw your attention to is that when we use the cornering tool or sometimes even just when we're copying and pasting, we might get funny things like this happening with our design. So you can see that this is... This little cable here, you know, that obviously is, doesn't look good. So what I have to do with this one is I need to actually come out with it and rotate it and figure out a different um, orientation for it. I discovered that if I rotate this one, I think it's 90 degrees. Okay, it looks like this. Um, and then if I do a flipping of it, that I get a better connection here for this point here. You see that that was so sometimes you're just gonna have to play around with some of these pieces and do some flipping and some rotating and just get some creative uses for figuring it all out. So this one here is intersecting nicely with this. But again, this corner is looking kind of funny over here. So we would need to do something with that one as well. Let's go ahead and rotate this one. Um, I don't know actually if just mirror imaging them is going to do it. I kind of think not. Yeah, I think I am going to have to go ahead and rotate it. But see, if I just did that there, it turns out good here. But now this one is kind of funny, this connection. So that one, you know, I can go ahead and do a simple little mirror imaging of it. But now I've got the same problem over here. So eventually you are going to have to do some rotating of these designs. And I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees. Just to get it in there. And then I'm going to use the vertical tool to flip it that way. And that gives me what I want. Okay, so just kind of play around with your motifs a little bit. I'm not going to squirrel around with this too much. Mainly what I was concerned about with this part of the design is that my cable looks like it's nicely intertwined with amongst itself. One of the things I want you to all notice that we can do here is... Um, couple of different things you would need to do before you sent this over to your USB stick. Let's zoom out so that we see the entire hoop real easily. One of the things that we would want to do in our edit tab is we would want to change the sewing order of it so that it did have a nice logical pathway. You know that when you do that all you need to do is turn on sewing order and then you just click on the sections of the design in the order that you want them to stitch out in. All right, which is what I'm doing now. And what you'd also notice is that it's actually changing it over in the design list. So then I turn it off and my sewing order is set up like I want it. 
The next thing that we would want to do is you can see on this design that it's not centered in the hoop. And we can see that because, and the reason why is because I was having to move my design pieces around so that all of them connected with one another. So all we need to do there is select the first one, holding down our shift key, hold, click on the last one, and then we can center, use the center button. There we go. So now the design is centered in the hoop. And if we love it and we like all of our connections, we could go ahead and send this over to our USB. All right, so we, we can do that, all right? There's another thing that I would recommend also is that if you are going to be super picky about the fact that with the dimension that we wanted our quilt to be, which is 19, basically 19 and a half inches, and it said that our design was going to be a six and a half inch block, which is this overall white area that we see on the screen. And we can see that because of the sizes of our motifs, our design is actually a little bit smaller than six and a half. Well, if that troubles you, that means that you would need to actually select each one of these little pieces and you would have to resize them here in the edit screen individually. And you cannot do them more than one piece of a resize at a time. You know, I could show you, I could select all of them and I could try to hit resize, but it's grayed out. So I, that means I'd need to do it one piece at a time. The other thing um, that operates in much the same way is that if we decided we wanted this entire cable to be a different color other than the default of black, um, again, you would have to do each one of those individual pieces, change the color on each one individually. I played around with this design and I'm just going to show you that if I really wanted this to fill the entire six and a half inch design area, if I select each piece and I just resize it up to 102 and do each one of these individually, I'll try to do it quickly, um, but be careful when you do this, make sure that you're keeping track of your pieces as you're clicking on things here um, and that you don't wiggle them out of the way like I just did with that one. Okay, I think that 102 just about does it, 102% pretty much fills up the size of the design area. You know, maybe I would want to go up to 103, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that uh, because you will have to do them individually. Actually, I think 102 is about it. Um, when we start to move things around here and get the intersections all lined up with one another again, it pretty much is filling up my hoop. So those are just a couple of things that I wanted to draw your attention to as you're working on your project. You know that sometimes you're just going to have to um, play with your layout a little bit here and you know just kind of get things exactly like you want them you know it's really important that you get them exactly like you want them remember why because you're not going to be able to open up this design this exact same design again in this section of the program and play with any of these positions and sizes and things like that. Remember, the program is not going to want to open up this JPX file. The only place you're going to be able to open this JPX file up is in the section of the program. I'm not going to be able to get there actually because without uh, saving this design, but the place that's called the multiple design setting that will open this JPX and it will also open the AFL if you were to save this directly to your to your computer. All right, so you know, I think that for demonstration purposes that this is this is pretty good. I think that this is gonna work out all right. And from here, one of the things that I would do is go back to my home screen. I will write this design. And what I'm going to call it, you can see that I've been working with this program a little bit here. I've got some things here that could confuse the matter a little bit. I'm going to name my design according to the dimension of my quilt that I designed it for, as well as the size of the block. So what I mean by that is now that I say this, this design, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to say that the quilt is a 19.49, I'm gonna call it a cable border. EDR is abbreviation for a border, and I'm gonna call it 19, point five because it's more or less a 19 and a half inch quilt block with a dash, and then I'm gonna say that it is a six and a half inch block. 
Okay, so what I've done here is I have um, put in the description of the project as part of the file name. And that way this would possibly make sense to me when I come around to using this design again when it's on my USB drive. So there it is and it's ready to sew on my machine. One thing I want to also show you is that in Horizon Link Suite, we could also open up uh, these little motifs in our embroidery link tool. And I've got my embroidery link tool open, and this is one of the designs that's built into the AccuFill program. It is a Jeff design, so we could actually look at this and see how it would stitch out. Um, how about instead of watching this, what we could do, let me just run this through a simulation for you. This is one of the designs that we used. And, you know, you can look at this and you can see that there are some areas where you are going to obviously see that you've got some tie-ins. And if you know anything about machine quilting, you're going to know that with certain kinds of designs, you're going to have to have areas where it's going to have to stitch over back and forth on top of itself. This cannot be a single run design because of the nature of this design. So let's just take a look at the simulation of this. Okay, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Yep, we had a jump right there, you know, and so just kind of preview some of these designs if you want to over here in this part of the program, just to give you a little idea of how they're going to stitch out. So there we have it. There's our cable border design from the work, not the workbook, excuse me, the manual. And the next thing that we're going to do is work on another border design using um, another section of the program based on information from our manual as well.